Yo, um, so no script. I have my collages in front of me, but that's about it. I'm just gonna go really quick into it because I'm not the best person with words. And I feel if I try to explain something without having something prepared, it just comes off very amateurish. So I'm just going to kind of fire into it. So off the bat, I do think 2023 has, so far has been very weak, very weak. My least favorite year of the 2020s. In general, I always felt very iffy about the whole thing. I've only listened to 50 albums. Usually in other years, I would listen to like 100 by now or 200 or something crazy. But I'm really trying to, to take a more calm approach to everything. You know, give stuff more listens, go back to more songs. Just something that's not so like convoluted and so overwhelming uh and it's worked out for me so this year i decided to do a different format where i was picking two albums mainly a best and a favorite or most played or best whatever it is because over the years i've just kind of heard an album and then i just moved on and i really didn't want to do that because sometimes like i forget the album or I don't give it enough attention. Or even if at the end of the year, uh, I'm kind of like scrambling to, oh, I got to hear this. I got to write this. I got to put that. I, like, I didn't really want that pressure. So what I wanted to do instead was, here's a more present approach to it, where I can pick these two albums and they represent the month. So off the bat, again, just going to go quick. In January, I heard After the Magic and To What End. And... I really liked After the Magic because I do think it's kind of better in its execution versus To See the Dream because the vocals aren't as harsh, the drumming and the songs don't sound the same. Overall, it's just really polished, really matured. I, I really liked it. To what end? First month as I think usual. Uh, it kind of was weak, but I still like Odyssey. He's my boy. Um, but I still think the album, yeah, it was had great production, nice maturity from him. I know maturity is weird. Again, I keep saying it. I'm sorry, but that's what it is. In February, we had Dog's Body. This one, I don't remember too much of it. But again, I, I remember there was nice, nice bangers on here with just really heaviness, rawness. Uh, I think it had like a like a punkish kind of thing, uh, like a metal thing too. Again, sorry, I'm just explaining. It was really cool. Uh, and it was... At the time when I heard it, I was like, yeah, like, it's easily the best thing to come out of February. And then I also really liked um, the Desire I Want to Turn You Up by Carolyn. I don't, I don't know how to say her last name, but by her. Uh, a lot of variety, uh, a lot of creativeness. And I heard her album before this because, like, I've been wanting to hear her. And I did like this more than the previous album. Um, but again, yes, yeah, like, some good stuff. And then we have in March, we have Ugly by Slow Tie and Don't Scare the Hoes. I think that's what it's called. Uh, obviously by Danny Brown and JPEG. Uh, Ugly, I know there's controversy right now and maybe that's a hot topic or not. But still, I still think even for this month and even for the year, I still think this is my album of the year and my album for March. Just the way that it's a seamless blend of like all these genres. It's very well done the way that it, that it is executed um and, and also it's emotional it's heartwarming it's like heartbreaking i really like it uh i just got the hose again the mixing was so bad the mixing the production in terms of like the quality of it it was it was yeah it was kind of all over the place it was messy even though even some of the songs kind of just drift off into other places so there's not really a consistent feel sometimes uh but i still think it's very innovative very weird and it's good <laughs> in April, we have, um, this is a Chinese Russian band. I can't, I don't even know what the name is, but when I heard it, they were evil, they were dark, they were monstrous, it, they were, it was intense, and I love that stuff for my metal. So I heard it and I was like, oh my gosh, I love a metal album right now, because it's been a while since I've done that. <laughs> so very good. And then we have That Feels Good by Jesse Ware. This came out towards the end of the month, so I uh, it didn't have much time to really resonate. But at the time, I still like replayed it for those last two or three days. 
uh and again it was just high quality stuff uh amazing songwriting very catchy her voice sounded way better more mature and i just liked this sound way more than her album in 2020 i don't know what it was but just something clicked with this one and not that one and then we got may and uh yeah this was a bad month um i don't know if it was just music didn't come out or i was just kind of in my own world with something else but i only heard three albums and that doesn't really happen again like i get in january but in may that's like that's a very bad sign that like this year has just not been quality the one thing that actually that stood out was maps by billy woods um it's probably like leading 2020 as like the best rapper no doubt uh in this album it's a it's it's much more easy to get into it because like the beats are more friendly but they're still experimental so so that's cool because that that allows him just to do what he does some really great a amazing stuff here and lastly we have in june and my god june was insane june it was easily the best month of the entire year and it doesn't fix the problem of this year being weak but it sure does give me hope more for what is to come we have this one album that came out of nowhere for me 001011 by salvia i believe and it's just very innovative. It's very creative. It's very out there. And that's just the genre of glitch pop. And I just, I've come to know that I, I love that sound. Uh, we have some Bjork production uh, elements. We have like that Yule kind of craziness and uh, kind of like wishy-washy stuff. And then we have the kind of variety and the craziness of Carolyn. Uh, just overall, like it, it, like it kind of blew me away and it actually made me happy because I was like, oh my gosh. <laughs> I haven't felt so happy about music in forever. So that felt amazing to go through. And then my most played one is Space Heavy by King Cruel. This one sounded really like Duster. And his lyrics and his chord changes that he has, it's very, uh, it fills me with a lot of imagery. It's so simple, but like, like I feel that paranoia or that lost in, in life kind of feeling. Uh, it's a very atmospheric album. And that's why it, it was probably like the most played one of the year, to be honest. And that's about it. I've always wanted to do this where I'm making m some type of music content. Again, I'm not the best at speaking, but I just wanted to, you know, talk about it or to geek out for a little bit. If you want to see more music content, let me know. So until then.